This is Scout, who is an awfully cute little puppy, but as many puppies are that are four months old, he's a little rambunctious at times. Uh, he does a little bit of jumping up and a little nipping, uh, which one of the, uh, the kids in the house would prefer he didn't do. And so we're gonna work on some of those things during the session. Uh, I asked mom one of the things that she wanted to work on, and one of the things she said was she wanted to work on his drop. So I thought we'd, this would give us an opportunity to quick, shoot a quick little video and teach your dog or your puppy how to drop things. Now, Scout's right now got a bully stick that I gave him. Um, I'm not a big a fan of uh, rawhides. Rawhides are dipped in ammonia and bleach and a lot of other chemicals to prepare them, but because the dog ingests them, it's not a very healthy thing for your dog to eat, so I prefer bully sticks. Uh, these are actually bully bites, so bully sticks have about that long. These are just a little piece. Now, this is a high value item because he's not getting these very often, so this is just like us. If, you only are, if you're on a diet and you only get pizza once a month, you really look forward to that pizza and it's really delicious when you get it. Um, for dogs, if they have too much access to something, it becomes what we call a low value item. Low value items would be like maybe a tennis ball, a piece of rope, a squeaker toy, you know, a Kong, anything along those lines. These are things the dog can have at any point in time. They're not particularly uh, unique or uh, it's not a special occasion when they get pulled out. This is something he probably doesn't have very often. Now, uh, in order to teach your dog to drop, what you want to do is you want to practice things in an easy capacity, just like we do. If we're going to play, if we're going to, uh, you know, sw swing a bat at a baseball game, we take a couple of practice swings. We warm up. Well, you know, if teaching a dog to, uh, to drop, we would maybe practice instead of doing an actual game if we're using the baseball analogy. So uh, during practice, we want to kind of, uh, you know, you have somebody throwing pop flies and you're catching them over and over to refine that skill. When it comes to a drop or any skill that your puppy has, you want to repeat it in an easy situation where the dog is happy to go along with it. Um, and then you gradually start making it more challenging. If I start using like when he has a piece of steak and trying to get him to drop that, well that's something I don't get very often and it's very high value so I don't want to give it up. So you have to practice what we call low value items. This is a higher value item. I haven't tried to drop with him, so we'll see how this goes. If this doesn't go well, then this would be an example of you want to do it when he has a regular uh, low value item. And I'll explain here in a second. So right now he's got the item, he's got it in his mouth. We'd prefer to have the dog carrying it in the mouth and not holding it. So I'm going to kind of facilitate this a little bit by just take, there we go. So I want him to be up with it. I have a high value training treat. I'm putting it in front of his nose. He's going to try to take the treat and while well, he keeps drop, while he takes the item. And while well, he keeps the item in his mouth, that's what dogs will want to do. Well, I don't want him to do that. I want him to drop it. So I just hold the treat there. I don't entice. I don't tell him drop, 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 drop. I just wait. Now, go ahead. Again, we want to have him up when he's doing this. So I'm just waiting. There you go. Drop. Whenever you correct or reward your dog, you have a window of three seconds to correct or reward your dog for them to make that connection. So as soon as he drops it, we pop the treat in his mouth and we say the word drop after the treat goes into his mouth. It's really important. It's after and not before. Um, now, this is a high value item, but he was still willing to do it. Well, the, the premise of this is essentially for dogs in the wild, if I have a bone or something and another dog comes up to me, well, I'm going to growl at that dog because I want to keep my bone. I want that dog to understand you can't take my bone. If we're stranded on a desert island and we find a chicken and somebody tries to take our chicken, we're going to be defensive of that chicken because we're hungry. And so it's natural for dogs to have this. This is different than something we call resource guarding, but it's a similar principle. So if your dog growls at you, uh, it could be a resource guarding. And if your dog looks like it's really aggressive when it's doing it, that probably is resource guarding. At his age, it's really just going to be him going through mimicking certain things. So you can see <laughs> right there. So this is an example of resource guarding. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to drop it, drop, and then he gets the item. Now the same principle for this is what we would use for resource guarding. For resource guarding, you want the dog thinks you're going to take my stuff. Well, for resource guarding, what we want to do is communicate to the dog that when I approach you, I'm not here to take your stuff. In fact, I'm going to make your situation better. I'm going to present you with something better than what you have. When you drop what you have, I'm going to give you the thing that's better than what you have, but I'm not going to take the item that you dropped. So the dog's like, so when you come up to me, you give me something better than I, I drop what I have, you give me something better than what I had, and then I get the thing I had originally, deal. So what we want to do for uh, resource guarding for others, there we go, drop, is we want to practice giving him the treat when he, after he drops it and not taking the item. Now, I did have one client where the dog got in the counter, it was a counter surfer, and it grabbed a butcher knife, and it was running around the house with a butcher knife. Now, that's, it's funny, but it also can be dangerous. Now, in that case, if you're reaching forward trying to get that, you might get slashed. Or if the dog grabs your underwear or some shoes or something it's not allowed to have and we try to steal and force it away, that's going to make the dog more inclined to want to guard it in the future. 
So uh, to get a, a very strong and reliable drop, whenever your dog has regular toys, it's eating them or chewing on them and there's nothing else going on, pull out two or three high value treats like this, go over, drop, and then let them go back to it. Now, when we do get to the point where if he does have some shoes or a butcher knife or something he's not allowed to have, we want to get him to drop. So we would, we would offer the treat in front of him, he drops it and says, and we say drop, and then we would take the object, that's, but this would be an exception. And then immediately I would get, want to give him like a bully bite or something of equal or greater value so it's more of a trade. So we're never just taking something away from the dog completely. We're offering the dog a reward for dropping it and it gets it back, or we're offering the dog a reward to drop and then to trade for something that the dog will also find equally appealing. Now, this is something where, again, you need to practice on low value items over and over again. If your dog gets growly like he did in that video, again, it's okay. Um, now, if you continue trying to take things away, you will make that situation much worse. So that's just a good illustration when your dog does that to you, to communicate to you, I need to be taught this lesson that it's good to drop things that humans are not here to steal my stuff. So just whenever your dog has a low value item, a toy or anything that they're allowed to have, walk over with a treat or two, hold it up in front of their nose, wait for them to drop it, pop it in their mouth, say the word drop, and then let them have the item and walk away. Do that enough and your dog will be dropping anything you want at any point. This is how you can teach your puppy or your dog how to drop things.